Peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, refers to uh, blockages in arteries that are away from the heart. These blockages are typically uh, fatty buildup or atherosclerosis, the same process that can involve a blockage in a heart artery. When we hear the term PAD, it is generally uh, thought of as uh, referring to lower extremity PAD, which involves blockages in the arteries in the leg. Many patients have no symptoms from their PAD. When symptoms do develop, patients will complain of claudication. That is a discomfort in the calf muscle and sometimes the hip that occurs when walking. These muscles do not get enough blood because of the blockage and they start aching due to lack of oxygen. When patients stop walking, uh, the discomfort uh, goes away and they can resume their walking. In more severe cases, uh, the restriction of blood flow is so severe that patients will develop gangrene or wounds in their lower extremities that do not heal. Patients at risk for PID are the same group of patients that are at risk for heart disease. Um, that includes those who smoke cigarettes, patients with diabetes, patients with high cholesterol, patients with high blood pressure, and those with a family history of vascular disease. Pa patients who smoke cigarettes are at uh, markedly increased risk for developing lower extremity uh, peripheral arterial disease. One of the most important reasons to be screened for PAD is this is a way of determining that you actually have atherosclerosis or the body-wide process of a plaque buildup. Even if you have PAD and have no symptoms, you are at increased risk of one day having a heart attack. The same treatment for heart disease is also administered uh, to PAD so that we can uh, prevent uh, heart attacks and strokes. PID can be diagnosed uh, very simply just by feeling the pulses in your legs. If you have diminished pulses, this is an indicator that you have PID. There's also a very simple test called an ABI, or Ankle Brachial Index, which measures the ratio of blood pressure in your legs compared to your arms. Normally this ratio would be one. A ratio that's lower than this uh, would indicate there is less blood going to the legs than to the arms. Beyond the ABI, there are more sophisticated tests that we can do as well, and that would include ultrasound tests, CAT scans, and magnetic resonance angiograms to actually get pictures of the arteries and locate the blockages. If you have no symptoms of PID, the main option is to aggressively treat the risk factors that we just talked about, lowering the cholesterol and stopping smoking. If you have claudication, the first thing that needs to be done is patients need to start on a walking program. Walking is very good for the legs and you can prolong the time or distance that you can walk. If this is not satisfactory, many patients will be offered angioplasty or stenting to open up the blockage and improve blood flow to the legs. This can improve a patient's quality of life by allowing them uh, to walk longer distances and not be limited by their claudication symptoms. In some cases, if angioplasty and stenting is not possible, bypass surgery can be performed. Following treatment with either a walking program or with angioplasty and stenting or even bypass surgery, quality of life typically improves as patients can now walk longer distances and do their activities of daily living uh, and be more productive. At the Heart Institute, we did a study looking at improvement in quality of life following angioplasty and stentin and noted that 80% of patients had a better quality of life one year after their angioplasty and stent procedure. The future for a patient with peripheral arterial disease can be bright if their risk factors are aggressively modified. Uh, quality of life can improve uh, with an exercise program and with a peripheral intervention. Risk factor modification is paramount uh, to lower patients' risk of heart attack and stroke, and patients who smoke need to strongly consider cigarette cessation.